Sam, you gave us some information, some data on uh, assassination attempts on presidents and candidates over about the last 100 years, going back to Teddy Roosevelt. On average, the Dow falls about 1% following this. Is this something that you think investors should look to when they're, they're just looking at the markets today? And are you expecting to see a similar result? Well, I think that investors should uh, certainly be aware of what has happened in the past. Uh, but obviously, the good news is that um, former President Trump was not uh, done, uh, injured more than uh, the ear, uh, that he was not killed. And as a result, uh, I think the market will continue on its momentum ways, focusing more on GDP growth, uh, earnings prospects, et cetera. Uh, but so I would tend to say that you might not want to worry about a 1 percent decline today. All right, not a lot to worry about right now. Uh, in general, we've heard growing talk about a quote-unquote Trump trade uh, with the idea that President Trump has the lead in this race. Some polling tells a different story that maybe it's more neck and neck or within the margin of error. But either way, uh, a lot of people looking towards that. Sokjan out with a note yesterday looking at the quote-unquote difference between the Biden trade and the Trump trade. Right now, the Biden trade having a bit more uh, upside, at least so far. Going forward, do you see more investors rotating into those quote-unquote Trump trade sectors and stocks that supposedly would benefit if Trump is reelected? Well, CFRA's Washington Analysis uh, Group, which is a political strategy group, uh, gives about a 60 percent likelihood that we will have a Trump re-election and an increased probability of both houses of Congress going Republican as well. So a unified government uh, going back to World War II has been the second best performing scenario, up 10.2 percent on average. The first best is, as you were talking earlier, uh, a split. Congress. So essentially, uh, the feeling is that I think investors are going to be focusing more on a Trump trade. Uh, and if they're not really sure, then they're going to focus on what will likely benefit from either candidate. And I think that would be the defense area. Uh, so looking for increase in defense spending, even though the prospect right now is for only about a rise uh, equivalent to inflation, our belief is that we'll probably end up seeing a greater increase into the defense budget. Sam, right now we've seen some moves uh, maybe to safe haven assets, things like gold, Bitcoin, if you consider Bitcoin a safe haven asset. Um, in your mind, where are the short term opportunities with so many questions following this assassination attempt? And also, we got to keep in mind last week, you did also see a lot of volatility when it comes to tech. Well, I, I think the opportunities lie uh, in the uh, also rands, if you will. Last week's action I called the underdog uprising uh, because we saw mid caps, small caps, we saw value stocks outperform. 86% of the constituents within the S&P composite 1500 rose in price. So I think we're going to be looking at the mid and small cap stocks, which are trading at a 30 plus percent discount to their average relative PE over the last 20 years. Uh, we're also likely to be you're seeing uh, improvements in foreign stocks, which are trading at about a 20 plus percent discount, uh, mainly because expectations are that we will see a rate cut starting in September, and that would make U.S. In, uh, fixed income investments less attractive to foreign investors. So probably seeing a softening of the U.S. dollar.